We are creating a custom PC with the most expensive motherboard we've ever built with. If this is you on screen right now, congratulations, you are last week's $100 winner. You have seven days to respond to your comment. This week, if you would like to win $100, all you have to do is look out for the code words throughout this whole video. Make sure you comment them all down below and we'll pick a winner at random. The winner will be announced in next week's video. Enjoy the build. Just a reminder, you guys can pick up an Office, Windows 10 or Windows 11 key from softwarekeep.com. With lifetime product guarantee, 24 seven customer service and thousands of reviews, you can have peace of mind with your purchase. Use code IFR25 for 25% off at checkout and receive an instant digital download. Now Navigate to the activation screen and paste your key here to enjoy all of Windows features. I'll leave a link down below. All right, this one is super exciting. Today we have the ROG Maximus Extreme Glacial Z690 motherboard. Oh, wow. This is like one of our dream motherboards. We love the monoblock that goes on top of it. Actually, I don't think they call it a monoblock. I forget the technical term for it, but we can't wait to get this one in the system. It's going in a very special system today. This looks absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Let me get it out for you and we'll give you guys a little sneak peek before we put the monoblock on. There it is. So this is the 12700K CPU and we chose this CPU because it has a turbo of five gigahertz. It's got 12 cores with eight of them being performance, four being efficient. So it's gonna be a nice all round system to go with our RTX 3080 GPU. We didn't really wanna go with the 12900K because we didn't really have one on hand at the time. So the 12700K, I think is an all round decent gaming CPU and we'll see if we can test it out. So for our storage in particular, and we could certainly fit a lot more in the motherboard, but for now we're gonna go with two MP600 Pros from Corsair. These are two terabytes each, and they've got amazing read and write speeds, which is really what we're after because we want Windows to load fast. We want our productivity to be faster. Any games that we wanna do, we also want them to load super fast. So two of these, I think it's gonna be plenty with four terabytes of total storage inside the system. Windows on one, and we'll have like some of our favorite games and programs on the other. I think this is gonna be perfect for the system with plenty of room for upgrade. Now the motherboard itself already has its own heat sink, so we're actually not going to have to use the heat sink that comes with this. So let's go ahead and remove that, and we can just use the drives with the onboard heat sink on the motherboard. There we go. Nice and easy. Now going on top of the motherboard as well to give it that really sort of premium extreme look feel, we have the, I guess, monoblock. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's called a monoblock, but geez, I really love the uh, glacial sort of designs that Asus comes up with. Here it is right here. So for the RAM, we've decided to go with the black Dominator Platinum RGB RAM. And this is actually our first edition RAM kit. There was no particular reason why we decided to go with the Dominator Platinums. I was tossing up between the Corsair Vengeance Pros as well, but we just really love the look and the feel of the Dominator Platinums. I think it's got more of a premium feel to it as well, but our first edition kit, it's very special to us. So yeah, we're gonna be using that. And it's got CL timings of 36 and also it runs at 5200 megahertz. So I think this will be plenty for the system. Let's go ahead and get them installed.
Today's case will be the brand new 5000T from Corsair. This case shares a similar design layout to the other 5000 series cases with the major differences being the outside panels of the case. The 5000T has more of a curved outside design and houses LED strips on the top and the bottom, back and front to give off a nice ambient glow. Inside the case there are three spots to fit 360mm radiators, however depending on the thickness you most likely can only run two at a time. The case comes with pre-installed Corsair Commander Pro with three RGB be fans at the front, however we will be removing these and replacing them. So these are the Corsair QL 120 RGB fans. These are a good all round performance fan. So good for static pressure, good for airflow. It's got good noise. So all around really good. Now the things I really love about these fans is the fact that the RGB is not too overpowering. When I'm going to photo or video any RGB fans in a build, these, the RGB turns out really nice. You can see individual colors. A lot of other fans, they all just look white. And that means to get the RGB through, you actually need to turn all of the lights down so you can't get daylight shots. That's why I love these fans. So for the cooling, we've got not one, but two 360 millimeter XR5 radiators from Corsair. Now these have a really good fin density, which is gonna play in really nice with the static pressure of the QL120 RGB fans. Now with two 360 millimeter radiators in play, that's gonna be plenty of cooling also for our 12700K CPU and RTX 3080 Strix GPU from ASUS. Lots of cooling going into this system. We cannot wait to get this thing all water blocked up, all water cooled. You guys are gonna love the tube run. So let's go ahead, let's get the fans installed on these radiators and we'll get them installed in the system and see how they perform. So I changed up the fan and radiator layout just a tiny bit. I think it's much better this way as well. Instead of having the radiator at the front, we've brought it to the back upside down because the two ports of the radiator actually line up with the two under ports of this distro plate. So that's gonna make it nice and easy for us to tube underneath with not a lot of room to play with. So for powering this system, we've got the HX 1200 power supply, a 1200 watt power supply. That is gonna be plenty of juice and more than we really need for this system, especially with an RTX 3080 Strix and a 12700K CPU. They're not really gonna to require too much power, so we've got all of that headroom there. There was no real reason that we chose this particular power supply, but we thought it'd be a good match for the system. And we usually, like when we're making our parts lists, we usually tend to go for the higher power supplies anyway, because we plan on reusing this actual power supply in future systems. And we don't know if we're gonna be pairing that with an RTX 3090 or what it might be. So going all out just means that we're sort of covered with our headroom there because we don't know how much power the next system is gonna be using. So 
So this particular package was also sent over with the uh, 5000 T case from Corsair. And this is going to make this system very unique because this is a one of a kind piece, but it fits in pretty much all of the 5000 series Corsair cases because the insides are pretty much identical. So let's go ahead. Oh, he's packaged it well. Let's see, so we'll get the, I think he's used power supply ends to try and keep it nice and safe. It's also in a towel as well. Really good packaging here. Two towels actually. Keep it really safe. So this is gonna look real, okay. So we've got another section one box. Give me one second, I'll be right back. So this is actually a distro plate designed specifically for any of the 5000 series cases. It looks really nice and I mean, it's even got ports on the bottom as well for draining and if you want anything at the bottom of the case. So let's go ahead and see how this works in the build. I can't wait to test it out. So I'm going to try and fit two Corsair XD5 RGB pump res combos into the system, but that all depends on how much room the GPU takes up and also how far the radiators and fans stick out. So this is a D5 pump res combo, which is going to be plenty for, you know, pushing the liquid around such a big loop, but also keeping it nice and quiet, which is ultimately what we want. And because we've got two, we could have two separate loops. So we'll see how this all pans out. Okay, a couple of things here. Number one, uh, this port right here on the very bottom, this needs to be this way, just a couple of millimeters to fit perfectly. Currently, it's actually uh, touching the wall. It really wants to be on top of the wall, but it's touching it at the moment, and we can make that work. Number two is this hole right here, uh, that's for us to put all our cables through. Now, I had to file down the edges of the Molex connector to actually get that through the hole because I don't have any of my uh, de-pinning tools on hand. I actually don't know where I put them after the move. So everything's in boxes at the moment. So yeah, filed them down, got it through there. So now it looks nice and clean. So I was thinking because we have the 12700K CPU going into the build, we already know that the RTX 3080 Strix pairs really nice with that particular CPU. So that is our choice of GPU today. Now the RTX 3080 Strix has a really nice design, but we're actually gonna be water blocking this card because we have a custom distro which will allow us to run tubes up and down and water cooling this GPU and the whole loop, I mean, it just makes sense with the custom motherboard design. So let's go ahead and get this card blocked. So for the GPU water block, we've actually got the XG7 RGB Corsair GPU block. Now, I do have one concern with this. At the bottom here, it says ASUS Strix RTX 3090 edition. I am a bit uh, worried about that. I did some previous research and it does say that the Corsair water block is actually compatible with all Strix uh, GPUs. So I'm really hoping it works with our RTX 3080 Strix, but only time will tell. So I was really hoping for this to turn out the way that I wanted it. I was gonna have a second reservoir right next to this one, but GPUs these days, they're just getting way too big for these systems. Like this is a huge case. This should be able to fit a second uh, reservoir quite easily beside it, but unfortunately we can't. And our second issue that I was saying before is the port on the bottom is slightly out of position. This should be sitting here but the port on the bottom 
makes it go to the side about two millimeters. So we're a tiny bit out of alignment. I will let Corsair know about this. And back to the GPU, if we put it in a vertical position, first of all, I don't have a Gen 4 uh, riser cable with 90 degree bracket at the moment, so I couldn't do that. But if we did, the card would end up here. We could only just probably fit a second one in, but I'm worried that the port uh, will be interrupted by the card anyway, so I'm not too sure if we can even do that way. So for now, we'll stay with one and we'll see what we can do from here. Now you guys may not have seen this product before, but this is a new graphics card holder from Asus. It's called the Asus ROG Wing Wall. The great thing about this is it's Asus Aura compatible, which means it's gonna sync really nicely with our ROG Strix and our Glacial Motherboard. Can't wait to put this in the system, and if you guys want to get your hands on one of these, I'll leave a link in the video description.
Thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed that build video. I'll leave all of the specs in the video description if you'd like to check them out further. And if you'd like to support us, Patreon or YouTube channel memberships is the best way to do that and it helps us out a bunch. So we really appreciate your help. Consider subscribing guys and we'll see you all in the next one.